there we have the distinguished second generation of uh, energy quantum fields. There is the Robert Rongo's Thank you. Okay, I'm I'm very glad to be here in this uh, anniversary. When uh, in 1957 I was four years old, so I don't remember this uh, <laughs> conference. Nevertheless, uh, algebra quantum field theory was uh, such an important story for my career. In fact, uh, I started my career as a pure mathematician. I have just a degree in mathematics, uh, and no start with the. My, my supervisor at uh, Sergio Doppio was professor of functional analysis at that time and gave me a thesis on modular theory. Nonetheless, uh, so I had absolutely, I knew absolutely nothing about physics, but Sergio invited uh, uh, regularly a young, uh, brilliant uh, researcher that was Detlev Buchholz. So he came, and uh, it's fair to say that uh, he was the first to uh, talk to me about physics, well, in, and especially the way a physicist thinks, and so I learned a lot. And uh, in particular, maybe th this was not his uh, purpose, but I learned that there was a lot of mat interesting mathematics in that, so it was <laughs> well to do mathematics, uh, even as a mathematician. And in fact, now we have many connections, so the story, I think, has completely changed. But uh, in any case, this, uh, I will not make uh, a story, anything, so uh, anything historical. I will talk on a particular subject that uh, for some people, for a small group of people, uh, it's very well known. Hmm? Well, I think it's, it's, uh, I think the first that uh, introduced uh, so standard subspace was uh, Uzi Araki, I think. But then uh, several people were Ekman, Oscar Walder, John Roberts, for example, and uh, Daniele Guido, uh, ma many. But uh, uh, well, a small group. But outside, uh, it's not uh, well recognized. So I think how important it is, and I think I will uh, talk about this subject uh, essentially. This, this, the slides cover my, up to my recent, uh, my, my work, maybe not so recent, it's uh, with the date of Buchholz and Claudio Antoni that was published in 2007. But then I will say also something on my more recent uh, developments. Okay, the structure is very, very elementary from one point of view because we are talking on the most familiar object maybe that we have in mathematics for that's so complex Hilbert space. So we start with the complex Hilbert space and then we take uh, a linear or some or a subset if you want, H, uh, and then we look at symplectic complement. So uh, all vectors in uh, the Hilbert space that uh, uh, the imaginary part of the scalar of the inner product with the element in this subspace is zero. Of course, this is a, the ju nothing just the real orthogonal of i h. No? If you multiply a, a, a set by i, you get another set, you take the real orthogonal. No? So in particular, you see immediately that if you, you have an inc symplectic complement, it's a inclusion reversing. If you have a larger set, you, uh, the, the symplectic complement uh, are including the opposite way, and they are linear subspace, they are re real linear subspace. So a standard subspace of an Hilbert space is by definition a, a closed real linear subspace, which is both cyclic. Cyclic means that the complex linear span of uh, the, your space is dense, and it's separating. Separating means that the intersection of H and IH is zero. And um, one can check easily that uh, if uh, a, a subspace is cyclic, if, the if and only if the symplectic complement is separating. So in particular, as a standard subspace is, uh, uh, a subspace is uh, linear, a real linear, a closed li real linear subspace is standard if and only if the symplectic complement is standard. Now we can make the, the uh, I, will, I would say, pre tomita takesaki pre-modular theory with standard subspace, which is much simpler, of course, than the tomita takesaki theory. Uh, 
So if you take a standard such space, one can define uh, an antilinear operator, which is, uh, uh, so it goes, the domain of this antilinear operator, it's, it's a complex linear span of your real linear space, and the symplectic complement maps psi plus ih to psi minus ih. Of course, it's well defined because uh, the subspace is separating, and it is uh, densely defined because uh, the subspace is cyclic. So it is cyclic and separating. However, it is also closed. It is automatically closed, not closable, closed, densely defined operator. And uh, it is involutive. So the square of this operator is the identity on the domain. Conversely, let's start with uh, a densely defined closed antilinear involution on a Hilbert space. Then we can define a real linear, linear special space, just the fixed point of this uh, anti-linear operator. The fixed point are a real linear space. And so we get a bijection. So standard subspace corresponds to a closed, densely defined antilinear involution on the Hilbert space. One can see that it is a one-to-one -one correspondence. And then modular theory, one takes the polar decomposition of this uh, closed linear operator. And what, and what gets what uh, uh, get a, a modular operator, which is a star S, and uh, a modular involution J, and this uh, this simplified version of, if you want, of the tomita takesaki theorem says that uh, this uh, unitary group generated by the logarithm of the modular operator preserves the. It's, if you want automorphism, it's, it's preserved this, uh, this standard space, while the module evolution maps the standard space into onto the uh, symplectic complement. Now, the first uh, observation now is that we can generalize easily uh, Bolker's theorem. I, I will talk later on. Uh, Bolker's theorem was an, uh, an important. Uh, theorem uh, uh, for, for Neumann algebras uh, motivated by algebraic quantum field theory, but one can do the, the uh, sunset based theorem, so uh, version. So if let, let's, let's start with a standard space, a one parameter group of unitary with positive generator. And this uh, one parameter unitary has a property that maps this standard space into itself positive value of the parameter. Then automatically you get this commutation relation. So the, the, the delta, the modular operators, the adjoint action, the modular operator, implements so, so dilation, if you want, on this one parameter group, while the, the adjoint action, the modular conjugation, change the sign. Hmm? This is, um, so if you want, uh, 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 if you want, uh, uh, this is nothing, if you uh, want, said in a different way, if you take the logarithm of delta and the generator and the, and the logarithm of the generator, you they generate, they, they are the, the algebra generator for the AX plus B group. So we have a, gener we have a representation of the a a AX plus B group. Now, not that if uh, in the uh, in the previous situation, the Borges pair, if you want, uh, if you if you, you remember that the, this unitary one parameter group maps H into itself for positive value parameter. Take one for example, take subspace. This is a standard subspace, and the more this has the property that the modular group of H, that's a very simple computation, uh, maps this k into its sale. So it is what, uh, what uh, Wiesbrock uh, called the outside modular inclusion in, uh, in the setting of four normal algebra. We shall be back on this. Okay, the proof of uh, Borker's theorem is uh, quite simple. In fact, one, if there is a proof uh, for four normal algebra by, by Florig, and uh, one can adapt that, huh? and it becomes quite, uh, Remember, the, the first proof of Borker's theorem was very complicated, it was based on several 
complex variable techniques. It is quite interesting. You, you, you take a vector in the, in the standard set base and a vector, arbitrary vector, in the symplectic complement and consider this function here. Huh? And the goal, our goal is to, to show that this function is constant. Huh? But then uh, what, what uh, you realize that by the KMS condition, okay, uh, then you have some analytic continuation in the strip, uh, in the strip uh, of, uh, uh, um, on the complex plane with the imaginary part uh, between zero and one half. And then if you compute this analytic continuation, uh, that you make a rather straightforward computation, and you see that you get the same function, but you have replaced V with another unitary, the unitary, this unitary uh, J U minus T J that we want to show that is equal V T. So we have exactly the same situation, but with another bulk space. So we can repeat, we repeat and we arrive at the same. But then uh, we glue together, no? we have an analytic function on a on a strip, which is constant the boundary, and uh, so we stand to the entire plane and it's constant. So now we can, uh, next association is that we can even uh, Wiesbrock theorem as uh, can be extended to this setting. And here the, 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 the right uh, proof to, to look is the, the one by Araki and, and, and Zido. Uh, this is, a, this is a, you know, the story that the Wiesbrock original proof was, uh, contains a gap. It was simple, but it uh, contains a gap in the proof. So the, the, the first proof uh, was, uh, you can find uh, in papers by Borges and Araki and Zido. And uh, uh, Araki and Zido proof in particular, uh, one can generalize. And, uh, and uh, it goes a lot of ways. So let's assume that we have a two standard subspaces, and uh, which are outside modular with outside modular inclusion. So K is uh, included in H, and the modular group of H maps K into itself uh, for, for negative values of T, let's say, or minus IT for poor. Then the, this is very surprising, the, the, the modular group of K and the modular group of H generates a representation of the AX plus B group. So automatically we have, a, we have a, they generated two dimensional Lie group, which is not at all uh, evident. And uh, in particular, the, so if you have AX plus B group, we have a translation. In particular, you take the difference of the two modular group and uh, take uh, the difference of the logarithm of the two uh, modular operators, and the generator is as positive energy, and it is uh, the generator of uh, translation. So it is not only a, gen a representation of the AX plus B group, but it's a representation with positive energy. So the conclusion is a positive energy representation of AX plus B group is exactly the same object as a Borkert pair, so a standard space plus one parameter group with positive energy mapping H into itself for positive values of the parameter, which is exactly the same object as an outside modular inclusion of a standard subspace. These three point of view are exactly equivalent. Uh, therefore, in particular, if you as a non-zero vector, uh, uh, let's say, let's remove the degenerate part, this pair is unique if it is irreducible, no? because uh, we have a, by the unicity of the wild commutation relation. So every, every such, uh, such pair is a direct sum of the unique uh, irreducible uh, one. No? So we have a complete uh, description. Now let's go to, to the phenomenon algebra setting and uh, start with the phenomenon algebra. Well, sorry. Phenomenon algebra H acting on a Hilbert space with cyclic separating vector, and then takes the self adjoint part of the phenomenon algebra, apply to the cyclic separating vector, takes the closure, you get, of course, a real linear, closed real linear subspace, which is a standard subspace. 
and uh, that's easy to check that the, the modular operator with standard set base are the Tomita Takesagi modular operator and, uh, and same for the modular conjugation. But of course, uh, the result of Tomita Takesaki is much stronger. Let's say that the adjoint action of the modular operator implements automorphism of the phenomenal algebra, not of the standard set base. But in particular, the symplectic complement of the commutant is the same as a, uh, as a commu or symplectic complement. The symplectic complement of M, uh, of the Hilbert space of M, is the same of the symplectic complement uh, of the e standard space associated to the commutant. So the, the standard, the for, uh, for Borker's theorem, the original one, uh, was uh, like this. Say uh, we start with the phenomenal algebra M, a uh, cyclic separating vector, and one parameter group with positive uh, unitary one parameter group with positive uh, generator, that such as the adjoint action maps M into M. And then we have this uh, commutation relation. Of course, uh, this commutation relation do not refer to the phenomenal algebra. So this phenomenal algebra is uh, completely useless uh, in this uh, theory. In fact, it works for, for standard subspace. But uh, one consequence of this is also that if, uh, if uh, uh, the vector is uh, is a unique invariant, then we have a, a, a type 3 one factor, unless we are in the, in the case of a one-dimensional Hilbert space. And these are the, the, the original form of the, uh, of the Wiesberg, Borska, Araki, Zido theorem. So uh, standard, uh, a standard, uh, if you have a, a phenom uh, an inclusion of phenomenal algebra, M and N, with the joint cyclic and separating vector, and the joint action of the modular operator maps n into n, then even this part, then the modular conjugation, uh, the modular operator of n and m generates this uh, unitary representation of the ax plus b group with positive energy. Also, this part does not refer to uh, to phenomenal algebra. Uh, uh, so in fact, generalize. Of course, we don't know. While uh, we have a complete understanding of Borker's triples, of Borker's pair uh, in the standard space setting, the complete classification by unicity, we don't know how many uh, Borker's triple exist for phenomenal algebra. Huh? There are non isomorphic, that's for sure. But for example, this question was posed, uh, I think, uh, or it's a variation on a question that Detler to me. It is possible that we have a Borkert pair such that uh, the, the inclusion, uh, so this, uh, the adjoint uh, action of this one parameter group map, maps endomorphism of M. It is possible that uh, we have trivial relative commutants. Mm? Uh, this uh, we don't know, mm? for example. So we, we, we don't have uh, still uh, an, uh, an understanding of, uh, we, have an, we have very far from classification or understanding of the structure of the phenomena of the of the Borkerts or the, the Wiesberg triples. Now let's go to maybe a net of uh, space. So what is a, a local maybe a net of standard space? It is uh, just a map that for we start with the with the circle S1, a forever interval. Interval means uh, 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 every an interval, uh, an open connected set which is uh, non-empty and not uh, non-dense, let's say. So for every interval we get a, a real linear subspace, let's say closed, which uh, preserve inclusion, and uh, which is covariant. So we assume there exists a unitary representation of the Mebius group, so PSL to R, if you want, uh, that acts covariantly. So I this unitary representation, UG, transform the Hilbert space associated to an interval i into the Hilbert space associated to the interval gi, where gi, G, the Mebius group, as we know, acts on the, on the circle. It's an actual uh, by definition. Um, and then we assume a positivity of the energy, so this uh, representation should have a positive <laughs> generator. And cyclicity means the complex linear space of all spaces is dense. And locality, means that, that if you take a disjoint, uh, disjoint interval, 
the standards, uh, the real space, one, uh, one contained into the symplectic complement on the other. Then from this you get uh, for quite soon uh, the first consequence. The first is the reducibility. Not only the, the complex linear span is dense, but the real linear span of all, this is not uh, this uh, a capital H, of all standards of space is, uh, is, uh, the, is dense. And then uh, the rich leader theorem that every real linear space, a standard space, is not only, it's, it's, it's automatically cyclic and separating. Then the Bisognano Wickerman theorem, property if you want, that uh, we can interpret, we, give, we can recognize what is the modular operator of, uh, of uh, the Hilbert space associated to the standard space associated to an interval. And in fact, uh, the, the modular operator, the group generated the, by the, the, the logarithm of the modular operator, is uh, just a dilation. So if, uh, if you cut the circle and you get the real line and take half line, then this is just the rescale dilation uh, for added by maybe it's covariance. Huh? Right. And J, J does not, be, it's anti-union, it does not belong to the Mabius group, but you can add uh, to, so, so you can extend also to uh, orientation reversing symmetry, and you get uh, 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 it acts as a re reflection. So in particular, you get hug duality. So the standard space associated to the symplectic complement is uh, the standard space of the, of the complement of the interval. So it's maximally. Factoriality, the intersection of a standard space with uh, its symplectic complement is zero. Additivity, this is, uh, we'll see, is uh, Mm, Fredenag and Yost's uh, version, uh, we shall go back to this. If, if, if we, this, uh, this resembles the fact that we are, we are filled somewhere, if, if an interval is covered by a, another family of open interval, then the standard space is covered by the real linear space of all these small space. Now, now, now let let, let's uh, try to reverse a bit uh, uh, this uh, reasoning and, uh, and start now, cha let, let's change the point of view. So forget for a moment about standards of space uh, and start uh, with uh, a unitary positive energy representation of the Mabius group or PSL2R. And with the, well, with the extended, I would say, I don't know if it has a name, no? with the orientation per se. So we have also an anti-unitary involution that acts uh, uh, as a reflection. Okay. Then, of course, uh, we can, uh, by, maybe by using this representation, uh, we, we have an involution associated uh, to every interval just by covariance. And uh, we have, uh, and we can, uh, this is by definition. It's, uh, and then we can, this is a definition. We have no modular op operator so far, but we can define the modular operator just by uh, the generator, the, log uh, the logarithm of the modular operator is the rescaled generator of dilation. So we can define this uh, 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 an operator S, which is uh, associated with interval with J i delta one, uh, one half. And this is, of course, uh, and uh, you define by the property, th this is uh, a densely defined antilinear closed involution. So we get a standard subspace. So a Mabius covariant local, so we get a standard subspace for every interval. And it is uh, easy to see that it's local. So we get, uh, so unitary representation, positive energy representation of uh, PSL2R, mm, the extended PSL2R, gives a Mabius covariant local net of real subspace. So this is, uh, a, 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 uh, so conclusion is a net, local net of standard space is exactly the same object as a unitary representation with positive energy of PSL2, of the extended PSL2. It is uh, again uh, another point of view, it's a factorization. Uh, okay, let me go quickly on this. Uh, this is uh, the way how to encode uh, all this information with, uh, in a, with a finite, finitely many data. So instead of, of having only one uh, standard, half-size standard inclusion a la Wiesbrock, take three 
twisted space, K0, K1, K2, so they index by the three element group Z3. And uh, with the property, then one is contained, so they mutually commute. So one is contained in the symplectic complement of the next, uh, and, uh, and uh, this inclusion is sta uh, side standard inclusion. Then this information, this is a factorization of standard space, uh, this is exactly the same that you uh, as, a, as a local maybe covariant net of the Elibet space. So, so if, you if you take this, the circle uh, and you can split in three integral in a partition, you get uh, an, an, a standard, a standard uh, um, a factorization. It is the only way. So these three mathematical objects, factorization, local maybe covariant net of, of the Elibet space and positive re energy representation of SL2R are the same objects. Huh? So we have a complete understanding now of this, uh, not only of the two element, uh, two dimensional group X plus B, but also of the three element, uh, of the, the, or, uh, the three dimensional uh, Lie group SL2. Okay, now uh, maybe I uh, I'll go a little bit about uh, what, uh, what is a Mabius covariant net of phenomenal algebra. It's the same as, but now we have a phenomenal algebra. So for, ev for every interval, we get a phenomenal algebra with isonality, locality as usual, uh, the joint interval com gives commuting phenomenal algebra. Mabius covariant, so we have the, the, our, our unitary representation, the positive energy representation of Mabius group. That a joint action acts covariantly on the net, positive energy, vacuum vector, so there is a fixed vector for the, for the representation which is cyclic, and, uh, and then we have the, uh, which is the, the, you can translate the previous and uh, you get this uh, irreducibility, old phenomenal generated BOH, the usual rich leader theorem, Bisognano Wickman property, in fact, this does not depend on the phenomenal algebra, it's just this duality and factoriality. And all, all, phenomena, all, uh, all uh, phenomenal algebra type 3 1 factor or a complex number, provided, of course, the vacuum vector is uh, unique. And then uh, Fredenhagen Yotz additivity. So, so what happens that, uh, of course, uh, we're then. Uh, of course, we are more interested in the net, uh, local net of phenomenal algebra than the standard space. Uh, that's, uh, but uh, starting from a, a, a net of, of, uh, of uh, phenomenal algebra, we, we get, of course, uh, from this net of uh, a net of standard space, just taking self a joint part and applying to the vacuum. On the other end, uh, this is not the, the converse, but starting with the net of standard subspace, we get a net of factor by the usual second quantization pr procedure. So this is uh, uh, just, uh, you, you go to, as usual, on the Fox space, uh, and you take the phenomenal algebra generated by the Weyl operator associated to all uh, vector in uh, the standard space. Huh? So this is, of course, the, not at all the, the, converts, uh, the converts, but it is a way to, it is the most, uh, uh, immediate way to construct uh, nets of uh, phenomenal algebra starting from net of uh, factors. Uh, now the, let me recall this uh, split property, which is uh, which is uh, the uh, 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 property that se se the which is very natural. Selects it. it holds basically in all in, in, the, in the in all the right models, so to say. It says that if you take uh, two disjoint intervals, but disjoint uh, with disjoint closure, so they have positive distance, uh, then the two phenomenal algebra that commute uh, generate a not only algebraically a tensor product, uh, Murray and von Neumann, uh, uh, so, but also a, a, a tensor product of phenomenal algebra. Uh. It is a property of the net, uh, not of the representation, of course. Uh, on the other end, uh, and it's, a it's, it's crucial, but I will not discuss this. Uh, on the other end, uh, there is another condition, which is a trace class condition, that says that the generator of the rotation group, 
the, the, the um, semi-group generator should be dress class. This is a condition that refers only on the representation. And the trace class condition is something standard in conformal field theory. And this trace class condition implies the split property. So a condition only on the representation, so on the net of standard space, imply this condition of the phenomenon algebra. Uh, OK, I will uh, skip this and recall uh, the, the, the book of Zwickman nuclearity, which is a form uh, of nuclearity, which say that uh, book of Zwickman introduced uh, uh, in order, I think the original motivation was to, 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 to derive the split property. This is done with the, the generator of translation, which is not trace class, of course. They, 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 that's a map. Uh, so if you fix uh, an interval, then the map uh, x to e to minus b beta p x omega, should, should, where p is a generator of translation, should be a nuclear map. Nuclear map is some uh, refinement of, co of uh, compactness that is, is here, but I think most of you are f uh, familiar, and uh, maybe I, I don't. Uh, uh, this is a def definition, but it's, it's, you know, on the Hilbert space, it just means trace class. Huh? You, you may think of this uh, for the moment. It's not necessary that you go in detail. And now I, I would sketch briefly how. We derive the, this uh, Buchholz Wickham uh, nuclearity from the from uh, the trace class property. So if you, if you have a more now let, let's say just uh, in the setting of phenomenal algebra. If you have a phenomenal algebra, it's well known that we can see a phenomenal algebra as a non-commutative L infinity space. Huh? So if an abelian phenomenal algebra is nothing but L infinity. So the L two is the space and the L one is the pre-dual. So we have maps, uh, embedding maps from L infinity to L1, from L infinity to L2, and to L2 to L1. They are done to the modular operator, modular conjugation, but in the commutative case, they, they are the, just the usual embedding. And then um, you can ask whether this map, uh, for example, from LP to LQ, for P, let's say, L inf P equal infinity, Q equal to, are nuclear, for example, and then you get a condition of this kind. Okay, you have uh, several. I, I will, uh, I will, I will not uh, dwell on this uh, part, but uh, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, ask this uh, condition modular nuclearity, which is only if you have an inclusion n into m, you may ask whether this thing, the restriction of the inclusion of the embedding of L infinity to L two, restriction to from M to N is nuclear. This is a nuclearity. Okay, I will. I will. I don't think I have time to to dwell on that. Uh, but this is important uh, I, because, uh, of course, this, uh, this, uh, there is no net nothing. That condition modular nuclearity only refers to phenomenal algebras, and also this condition. So you see. Now, suppose we have an inclusion of phenomenal algebras. Then we have uh, a natural map embedding uh, n is contained in M. Then we have a natural inclusion of L infinity of n into L2 of n, and then uh, of L infinity to uh, of M into L1 of n, okay, of L2 of M into L1. All, all this diagram is commutative. And look at this. So the natural inclusion of L2 of n into L2 of M. This is uh, done in this property. Delta 1 for of m to delta of m to one fourth to uh, multiply by delta of n to minus one fourth. This is a bounded operator. What what <laughs> what happened? Maybe I yeah, it's again that story. So. <coughs> Sorry, the beamer switches off. And beamer is off. 
Bima switches off because it gets hot. Aha. Uh -huh. The way to go, uh, okay. It's a safety. Yeah. It's not so. It's not so hot. No, but it's uh, tedious after half an hour. It is not the lamp. Sometimes the lamp. Uh. So I, I started. Uh, at what time should I stop? Uh, uh, ten to. Yeah, ten to. <coughs> now it resumes. The countdown, another 24 seconds. <laughs> okay. Okay, we were looking at this diagram, okay, and in particular, given inclusion of phenomenal algebras end to end with a cyclic, common cyclic separating vector to the embedding of L2 of n into L2 of m, which has this form, uh, product of compositional modular operator to one fourth, one and minus one fourth. And it is easily to see that this operator is bounded. Huh? Of course, it is densely defined, but bounded, so it's, it's extended to a bounded operator on all the Hilbert space. Now, the what is, uh, uh, at least was to me quite surprised, that this operator can be nuclear, not only a compact operator, but nuclear. So, the con condition of L2 nuclearity means that uh, this operator, I say operator on, on the Hilbert space, is a trace class operator and that it is stress class norm is uh, less than one. And L2 nuclearity mean, implies modular nuclearity. But um, while modular, modular nuclearity was something that involved the phenomenon algebra, okay, if you look, this, uh, this condition is formulated for phenomenon algebra, but it involves only the standard space because it is the inclusion from L2 of M into L2 of M only refer to the standard space associated to the phenomenal algebra. Okay. So, in particular, we, we can look at uh, what happened to uh, nets. And this operator, so we, stand, uh, we, we take an inclusion of standard space and take the embedding. So, it is a relative operator that corresponds to this, no? the product of the one fourth the mo of the modular operator. And then we can ask when this operator is. Uh, is a, it is a bounded operator, and we can ask when this is a nuclear. Now, let me recall a magic formula of Schreyer and Wiesbrock. At least it, uh, it was uh, published by Bert Schreyer, I think without proof. But, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's an extremely nice formula. It says the following, that if you, if you take, uh, um, if, you, if you split uh, the circle, okay, you take the, the, the right circle and the upper and the upper circle, right? And you take the, the modular operator, delta 1 and delta 2. Del, delta 1 to 1 fourth, delta 2 to minus is, delta 1 to minus 1 fourth, is equal to the e to minus 2 pi s L0. So, you see, this, uh, this delta 1 to 1 fourth is an unbounded operator. So, this, uh, if you want, an unbounded similarity. But this is one parameter gr unitary group. This is a contraction semigroup with the, uh, but, uh, and, um, and uh, to give a proof of this, uh, at least, uh, uh, we, we supply the proof in this paper with the Daniele Guido, Bucot and Daniele Guido. And the proof uh, used crucially, and I don't know any other proof, uh, what I have explained. So the double meaning of this uh, modular operator. So, uh, from one point of view, from one point of view, this, uh, uh, the modular operator is a one-parameter subgroup uh, of the Mebius group. From one point of view, it's a modular operator, so it's a KMS. So you get two 
uh, analysis, one is from KMS, one from positive energy. You combine that. Hmm? But without that techniques, uh, uh, I don't see any, I don't know any proof. And then you, you derive this other proof hmm? that this operator uh, is expressed just the, the, the combination of the heat semigroup of the conformal Hamiltonian and the modular unitary group. And uh, you get a, lo a lot of other nice formula. formula. You get that, uh, that uh, for certain, okay, uh, these are parameters that I don't want to explain, but uh, the semi-group generated, uh, you see, f by the conformal Hamiltonian is just obtained by multiplying the semi-group by translation and the anti-translation, the one that you get by reinversion, okay. Uh, and, um, and in particular, you get this inequality, okay? The semi-group generated by conformal Hamiltonian is less than e to minus two, the, the hyperbolic tangent, uh, okay, or s, uh, one half of the semi-group generated by translation. So you, you need, a t the, the, um, y y you could uh, say, okay, but uh, the, uh, you, we have an inequality between conformal Hamiltonian and usual Hamiltonian. But the point that, uh, so you, you can exponentiate, but the point that the exponential is not uh, operator monotone. In fact, it, it, we don't get the same parameter. So we get, uh, this is the right inequality. With the same S, it does not work. And then uh, we have this uh, other that con formula that uh, compares the modular unitary group with the, the semi-group generated by translation. With this, uh, we, we can now have uh, uh, modular nuclearity and L2 nuclearity are the same. And uh, in fact, we can compare all these modular conditions. So the trace class condition, which is condition of the unitary representation, L2, modular nuclearity, Buchholz weak nuclearity, conformal nuclearity, and uh, the relation is the following. The trace class condition is exactly the L2 nuclearity condition. But L2 nuclearity condition has a double interpretation within a representation and phenomenal algebra. So we can pass to modular nuclearity. A modular nuclearity implies Buchholz Wickerman nuclearity, and this implies conformal nuclearity. Of course, uh, it would be nice also to put some other arrow up. This uh, does not uh, exist. Uh, OK. OK, then uh, one of the consequences is the words that uh, was starting with the trace class condition. We, c we can co use the Buchholz of Wickman, uh, uh, Buchholz um, Jungler's uh, uh, result, and, uh, and have a KMS. This, uh, I think, is the main application of this that uh, with, uh, when uh, we have uh, some uh, trace class condition with a certain behavior, yeah, with. Uh, then uh, there exists KMS state for, for, uh, for, um, for translations. Okay, I, this, uh, this was a situation up to this last work. Now I want to mention something more recent. And uh, this is a work in progress uh, with, uh, with Edward Witten. So what happened that uh, Ed Witten visited Rome recently, and uh, it was quite interesting. Operator Ajwa asked me a lot of things. And uh, we talk about many things. In particular, he was interested in uh, in uh, mm, the work of Henning uh, and me on boundary conformal field theory. So boundary conformal field theory is a boundary conformal field theory on the half line. So this, uh, this x and t. And then uh, we have uh, a, a theory on here. Uh, yeah. And uh, one of the starting point of the construction of, uh, of Henning, Rehren, 
I mean was uh, uh, that uh, if you if you have a net uh, usual net of phenomenal algebra on the real line on the time axis, well, you 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 define a net a local. This net sh should not be local, but you define. You can define okay uh, to begin with. We, we can uh, let's say local to begin with. Uh, you can define a net on the half line this way. No, you you define. You took. You took. Okay, this uh, I one. I2 and then O is uh, I1 by A2. So, uh, so th they are just th this is O. Okay. So, so starting, okay, we have AI net on R and then you get another net AO net on. Uh, um, X positive X. Now the question is um, uh, suppose V is a unity. Such that uh, V of AI V star uh, is contained in the future uh, of a uh, uh, okay of of I, if uh, if uh, oh, okay, let's say let's say in, in simplified is contained into into a a infinity for a for for all a in R, huh? so it maps half line in, into itself. Um, then we can define a new net just the previous uh, version but uh, you define a a1 and v a to Vista. Hmm? So this is uh, uh, okay. And suppose, uh, suppose, uh, suppose V commutes with translation. <coughs> so it is not a conformal net, but since it is, it is a perfectly local net. And since uh, we are assuming that V commutes with translation, this will be translation variant. So it's a, it will be boundary quantum field theory, not conformal field theory. So the question is, uh, what are such unitaries? And of course, uh, what I should... The left, ah, the left goes up. Uh, So of course we can start with the standard space. So suppose, so the question suppose we have a H is a net of, of standard space. So we, what we are, so we have and uh, on R. Huh? 
So you say, so if taking h equal uh, h zero infinity and tau translation, we get a bulk at space. Hmm? Yeah, ht is a bulk at space. In the sense that uh, t is, a, is positive energy, and t of th is goes to h for t positive. And now, the uh, question is, uh, take E of ht with the same group of unitaries that uh, such that Uh, VH is contained in H and VT and commute with T. This is a unitary semi group. And uh, now, of course, if we can, comp we can have, uh, compute this, uh, then we can, uh, we can start to have uh, some uh, uh, example. This will be the, the first uh, step. Now, I'll, then we can. First, uh, to begin with, le let's start in the irreducible case. So, let HT be irreducible, non-degenerate, so non-zero, non-degenerate, bulk at pair. So, I mean, this is a, th so uh, uh, you remember we classify, so, bulk space is standard space, this one parameter group of unitary with positive energy mapping H into itself. And we assume it is reducible, so it is not direct sum of O2, okay? Then V belong to this uh, semi-group HT, if and only if V is a function of uh, Q. Q is uh, uh, the logarithm of the generator of translation. And this function is, uh, phi is a, is a analytic function. In the strip, uh, uh, zero imaginary as less than two pi, uh, such so set phi of uh, z plus 2 pi i x to is equal to phi of x. So it, uh, but, okay, so it is analytic in this strip, and uh, it take, at, at, the va at the corresponding values, takes complex conjugate value. So you recognize that this is a, uh, this is very close to the notion of scattering matrix. So it's in particular scattering matrix. I, 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 pardon me. In particular, scattering matrix is a function Scattering matrix is, a, is a just a one parity in plus. So phi of minus x is also equal to phi of x or something of this kind. Uh, and we have uh, this uh, uh, construction by Lechner and also Lechner Bugots of, uh, of models by this. So by starting with the uh, with a, 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 with a, a a scattering matrix, uh, we can produce uh, every scattering matrix gives uh, a model, a quantum field model on the on the right uh, uh, on the right uh, half plane. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, mamá. Mmm. Amtsu. Of course, we can we we have uh, we can also do also the non reducible case can be handled. Reducible case. Uh, phi v is in the same group. It's uh, phi is a matrix, maybe infinite matrix of uh, of a function like like above <laughs> with a certain property. So this, the reducible case can be handled. But the important thing is that uh, we can start to having an example of this. Now, of course, uh, at this point, uh, since we, have, uh, uh, we are dealing with standard space, we can, uh, of course, use a free field construction. Gives uh, infinitely many, many examples models, if you want, of uh, boundary quifty on a uh, half plane. But we can do better because if you think, because we can generalize this construction because what you need, in fact, in this construction is not uh, such a semi-group, but uh, you can generalize hmm? from semi-group to standard subspaces. So I mean the following. Instead of having an element of the semi-group, take a, a standard subspace which has the property that is invariant for positive value of the parameter. So if you want, you get an inclusion of a bulk pair with the same one parameter group. But then we, you, you can take the canonical endomorphism, so the product of J, this V, and this V belongs to the semi group. So we can use, so as soon as we have a standard subspace, we have an element of the semi group. Or we can use this standard subspace. Now, for example, in the in the Buchholz market order of uh, uh, so so you so uh, by by using this idea uh, all Buchholz market order extension give new model. But we can do also something even better by using the Fredenhagen Yorts reconstruction. Because uh, Fredenhagen Yorts so from gives from net net gives uh, fields. And the fields are associated, uh, no? of course, uh, from, from the start, uh, fields are associated to smooth function. But of course, if you look carefully, they are associated to standard subspaces. So given a standard subspaces, you can select uh, a right standard we, you can You can also find, uh, in general, something here. So this uh, would give a completely general construction. The, the point here, the limit point here, that uh, this work uh, construction, while uh, in the previous case uh, all, mod all models are explicitly computed, uh, are new, this general construction works in, uh, in full generality, but uh, uh, there is no computation that uh, they are new. They are always there, but uh, the, the computation, what uh, in specific cases is, is, is still missing. Okay, I think I will stop here.
You mentioned that from a net of standard um, uh, Hilbert spaces by using the bosonic second quantization, yeah. uh, you get a net of uh, local algebras. Now, what about the fermionic quantization? S same, but it's not local, but twisted local. But it uh, works uh, perfectly the same. And also, you can even use the, the full, the, what's it called, the, the full Fox space. So you don't, you lose locality, of course. Eh? But from the mathematical point of view, it's not, uh, it has some uh, interest with this work by Claudio Antonio and Florino Radulescu and me, because uh, uh, the local algebras are not, as usual, the type to one hyperfinite factor, but they are the type to one associated to L infinity, the L F infinity, the, full, the, the for normal algebra associated to the, the free group of infinitely many generators. So the, from the mathematical point of view, it's, 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 it's interesting. And it's also a candidate for, for uh, outside module inclusion with real relative competence, but um, computation is not, uh, has not been done. Yes. Um, yeah, concerning the, the uh, <coughs> same thing, um, you, you said that um, if you go the opposite way, if you start from a local net, and uh, reduce it to the net of local subspaces, mm. you lose information. Yes. Do you have an idea which additional data on the net of local Yes. Uh, you, you, you exactly know the representation, because the standard net of standard space has exactly the same information. The, so you, what you need is the characters. But we know, so it's, it's the same as having the, knowing the characters. Of yeah. course, we know that different models can have the same characters. But character is an important information. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a sort of... But the character is, is again given by the representation. Of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was your question. What information you... What, what do you need in addition? Ah, in addition, uh, uh, that, that's... Uh, the, okay, what, what you would need, but I don't think you, uh, we, we are able to need. We, we need the order. So not only the standard space, but the positive cone. Because we don't only have the self-adjoint operators, mm -hmm. but the positive operator. Yeah. If we would know the cone, that we would know everything. But that's too much. I don't think that we can, I don't see any way. So that, that's the missing information. Mm -hmm. Order. Yeah, this uh, function phi, you have that as analytic one body, and that we understood as the, the boundary efficiency on the, on the boundary of this half, half space, or what is the... No, the, 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 the pi comes for free because, uh, because of the KMS condition, if you want, you know? Because the modular group, uh, there is some, uh, some, um, something uh, magic, you know? The, if you compute the modular group uh, of an interval, it's uh, the rescaled, it is a rocking at temperature, if you want, you know? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not uh, exactly dilation, but it's a rescaled dilation by 2 pi. 2 pi is the rocking temperature. If This one. Yeah, the function. What, what is the role of this? What is the role of this function phi? Ah, the role of this function phi. Yeah, yeah. The, the role is quite simple. That uh, that v is phi of q. These are all in the irreducible case. All all elements of this semi group have this, have this role. And these are the inner fun. Uh, they are inner. These are in uh, analytic function theory are well known. They are called inner function. So we, we can write down all of them, and uh, depends on the zeros that they have. Okay, I, I, but it's a classical part of uh, analytic function theory. Of course, so they, in the literature, usually you, they treat the circle instead of the strip uh, for some reason that I... Uh, it's well, this is the reflection of the exciting talk. Maybe one more question. <laughs> Similar question: In which sense is phi a scattering matrix? Do, do you have a scattering theory on the half? No, or no. That, that was uh, what I would like much to understand. What I can say is that using a similar idea, one can construct two-dimensional model on the full Minkowski space, two-dimensional Minkowski space. Hmm? And, and the idea, so, but this idea is apparently unrelated to what Lechner did. But 
I strongly suspect that there is, there is an intimate relation, but uh, so far I haven't seen. So maybe we can discuss. Uh, but uh, probably, it's, maybe it's the same thing even, but, but so far I can't see. Well, you very impressed, beautiful talk, and mm. uh, since we uh, have more and more in, uh, questions that are related to the uh, uh, further discussion to the private, uh, if you will. <laughs> thank okay. you again. Thank you. Uh, that was quite interesting, but <laughs> I'm 